Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering. We are still talking about transfer functions. Yeah? Last time we combined different transfer functions to a total transfer function to a complete transfer function. Uh, we said we had different things to take care about, you know, linear time invariant, non-reactive and so on. Yeah? Uh, however, we end up in a transfer function or a transfer element yeah, with an input and an output and the transfer element is described by its transfer function g from s yeah. the input is also in Laplace area xi from s and the output is xo from s yeah. and we said our XO from S equals uh, the input XI from S multiplied by this transfer function. That's it. Now let's have a short look at this S. Yeah? I said this S is a complex variable yeah? which contains of a real part. Yeah? And then we had plus an imaginary part, j omega. I said it looks like this. S is sigma plus j omega. And now I'm going to tell you a little bit about those two elements. Yeah? A reaction of a system is usually something which consists of transient parts. Yeah? So parts which will only happen once. Part where we go from one position to another position and that's it. Yeah? And there are also parts which are periodically. Yeah? These periodical parts, so they are swinging inside. Yeah? System might swing. Okay? This periodic swinging, yeah? the frequency of this swinging and, and how it severe it starts and so on. Yeah? This is described by this J omega. So this J omega is dealing with periodic things. Yeah? Therefore, this omega is the circular frequency of these periodics. Yeah? And this is 2 pi multiplied by the real frequency, let's call it. Yeah? So by the uh, how, how many repeats, how many things per second in hertz. Yeah? This is in seconds raised by the power of minus 1 per second. Yeah? So this is the circular frequency and this is the frequency. So, this is somehow described by this J omega, yeah, this periodic stuff. In the sigma, the transient parts are taking place. Yeah? So, if there is at, la at the beginning a big swing and then it is a small swing, those transitions from big to small, for instance, this is covered by sigma. The swing itself is covered by this J omega. Okay? So the sigma is also important if we're talking about stability and stuff like this. Yeah? We will see, we will talk about this. Yeah? And we talked about the measurement technique, we talked about frequency responses. Okay? We said we are testing our measurement equipment with uh, the help of a test function. And if the test function is a sine wave with a certain frequency, yeah, we get the frequency response out there which was also assigned with exactly the same frequency. Okay? And I now tell you, if we are only dealing, if we are only dealing with sine waves of a certain frequency, and we assume that this sine wave is already there an enough long time, so that all those transient things, yeah, all those what is described in sigma, yeah, is already gone, yeah? and I only looking at a stable swinging system, yeah? like in the frequency response, I can just formally replace this S by J omega. I can simply forget about the sigma because we say ah, whatever transient is already gone. Yeah? We are looking at a stable swinging system. Yeah? So we only we can just substitute S with J omega. Because we simply don't care about the sigma. 
mathematically correct, it's not really, yeah? but it's working. Yeah? And also in our uh, imagination. I think it's that's easy to remember. Yeah? So we have now the system. Yeah? And now my input xi is not from s, it's from j omega. So it the only sine wave with a certain frequency is coming in. Yeah? And the output is also a sine wave with, with exactly these certain frequencies, so with the, with the same omega. Yeah? And the transfer function of this yeah, is exactly the same transfer function. We substitute this with, with j omega. Okay. That's it. Yeah? Then we're ending up at the situation where xo from j omega equals xi from j omega multiplied by g from j omega. I write it now in brown to indicate we are only looking at the, at the imaginary part. Yeah? So we talked about we talked about the Bode plot measurement technique. You remember? Yeah? So the Bode plot was the relation yeah, between how big is the output, the absolute value of the output, divided compared to the input, the absolute value of the input. Yeah. And if we look at this, if we divide here with xi, yeah, so it's one complex number divided by other complex number, and if I'm looking at the absolute values, this is nothing more than the absolute value of this transfer function. Okay? Woo! Yeah. So the absolute value of the transfer function describes the upper part of the Bode plot. If you remember the Bode plot, how it looked like. Here we have the frequency, this time the circular frequency. And here we had this relation between XO and XI. This was written here. So actually we do have here the absolute value of g from j omega. This is... I can calculate this yeah? for several omegas and I already get up the amplitude part of the Bode plot. Yeah? What was the second part of the Bode plot? The second part of the Bode plot was the argument part. Yeah? So we wanted to know which, how which part of, of the swing we are late. Yeah? If we compare those two swings, like here again, yeah, we, we want to see the phase angle between those two. Yeah? And the phase angle between those two, so it's the phase angle of the output minus the phase angle of the input, is how late we've got. Yeah? And this angle minus this angle is exactly the angle or the argument of this of this transfer function. Yeah? So here we have here we have the argument of the transfer function. Yeah? So a transfer function, if I just replace S with J omega, my transfer function shows me both parts of the Bode plot. So I can calculate the frequency response of a transfer element just by replacing s with j omega. Yeah? Let's make an example. Yeah? Let's say our transfer function g from s yeah, equals 3 divided by 1 plus s 0.1. Yeah? So I'm now formally just replacing this s with j omega so it's 3 divided by 
1 plus j omega 0.1. Okay. And now, if I want to draw the upper part, I have to calculate the absolute value. So the absolute value is the absolute value of 3 divided by the absolute value from 1 plus j omega 0 0.1. Okay? So this is actually 3 divided by the square root plus 1 squared is 1 plus omega 0 dot 1 squared. Pythagoras. Why Pythagoras? Let's draw it. Let's draw it. This example. We have the imaginary axis. We have the real axis. Here is 1, 2, 3. Yeah. So the upper part is 3. This is just this. Yeah. Absolute value of this is 3, of course. Yeah. And the lower part is 1 plus and here this is omega multiplied by 0 dot 1. And here we had 1. Yeah. So, and if we do the Pythagoras, if we want to, to have the absolute value, it's this squared plus this squared and square root of it gives the length of this. Uh, this is what this absolute value is here. Uh, and if I now calculate this for different omegas, yeah, I, I can make my point somewhere in the Bode plot and have a nice view how it is working. Uh, the next video we will do exactly this example and draw it. Uh, so I will just go quick over it. Yeah? And now let's come to the to the argument. This is the argument of the above part of the fraction. Yeah? Argument from 3, you know, the angle is 0 degree, yeah? minus now this angle. Uh, and this angle is the arcus tangens from this part, 0 0.1 omega, yeah, divided by this part, 1. Yeah. So we ended up in minus arcus tangens, 0 0.1 omega. Yeah. And also this I can draw for several omegas and I get also some curve out of it. I know it's looking like this because this is actually a system, delay system first order PT1 system. We will calculate this in the next video. The interesting part is that whenever I have a transfer function, I also have the frequency response of exactly this transfer element. And we will see out of the Bode plot, or also the Nyquist plot, what a Nyquist plot is, is also covered in the next video. Yeah? So those things, they have tremendous importance if we are talking about stability and stuff. Yeah? Or if we analyze, analyze control loops. Yeah? This is why we are talking about this. Yeah? So frequency response is just a part of the of the transfer function. Formally I can calculate it by just replacing S with J omega. Yeah. And next time an example out of it. We're doing exactly this example 3 divided by 1 plus S 0 to 1. And then we're also talking about the Nyquist plot. A Nyquist plot, what a Nyquist plot is. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.